Hello. I have been asked to explain some of the mathematics behind the animations in my videos. In this series of talks, I will try to do just that. In this first part of the series, we will look at curves called epicycloids. Most of the patterns in my Spirograph style animations start with a fixed circle or wheel like this. We add a second smaller wheel which rolls around the central wheel without slipping. In this case, the central wheel is three times the size of the small wheel, so we say the ratio of the wheel sizes is three to one. As the moving wheel rolls once around the central wheel, it also rotates three times about its own centre. This is easier to see if we add a red pen to record the path of one point on the moving wheel. We can see that the red pen touches the central wheel at three points before returning to where it started. Instead of thinking of the circles as wheels, you can also think of them as gears, with the large gear having three times as many teeth as the small gear. This is how a traditional spirograph toy works. Of course, there is nothing special about the number three. When the small wheel is only one quarter of the size of the large wheel, the pen touches the large wheel at four points instead of three. Or with an even smaller wheel, we can trace a path that touches the large wheel at five points, and so on. These curves are called epicycloids, from the Greek words meaning above or outside a circle. Here are the three epicycloid curves that we've seen so far, drawn in three different colours. There is no reason why the moving wheel has to be smaller than the central wheel. We could make the moving wheel twice as large as the central wheel, so that the ratio is now 1 to 2. This is the pattern that we get. Notice that the moving wheel now has to go twice around the central wheel, before the pen comes back to where it started. But the pen only touches the central wheel once. So far, the ratio between the sizes of the wheels has been a whole number. Two, or three, or four, and so on. But we can use more complex ratios. Suppose the central wheel is two and a half times the size of the moving wheel so that the ratio of their sizes is 5 to 2. Now we get a more interesting pattern. Notice that the moving wheel goes twice around the central wheel and the pen touches the central wheel five times. We can get even more complicated patterns by combining epicycloids with different ratios. For example, we can use three wheels with sizes in the ratio 8 to 5 to 4. The smallest wheel rolls around the middle sized wheel, and that wheel in turn rolls around the largest wheel. This creates an even more complex and more interesting pattern. In the next video, we will look at the patterns we get if the moving wheel rolls around the inside of the other wheel instead of round the outside.